Hey, this is Joe from Brain Buffet. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to import media with the Premiere Pro Media Browser. I'm using an example from my Brain Buffet course on Premiere Pro, which I created to prepare students for their Adobe Certified Associate exam. In this project, I wanted to show you a different way of importing your files. Some people like to use what we call the media browser, so it's, a, it's just a different workflow. So down here in your lower left-hand corner in the project panel, or next to the project panel, is the media browser panel. And um, I think it, it's a little hard to see in this layout, so let's go to the assembly workspace, and that's going to make it a little bit easier. Or if you really want a lot of space, remember you can just put your mouse over the top of any panel, Let's go to the media browser, put your mouse over the top of any panel and hit the tilde key. So that, in fact, that's, let's do that. Let's go to um, media browser and whether you're in simple edit or you're in assembly, let's go to tilde to make it full screen. Okay, so the media browser, first of all, we're going to browse to our media. And um, this is the part that's a little bit tricky. Um, I put my stuff on the desktop. If you have a secondary hard drive, then it's going to be listed right here. Here's my SD card, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But the desktop or my documents, depending if you're using either of those, is going to be in the C drive on a PC. And you, so where is it in here? So you can either use the, the arrows over here to navigate to different things. So for example, if I wanted to go into users, I could do that or over here you can double click on these folders. So um, my username is called Brain Buffet, so I'm gonna open that up and there is my desktop. So there's my folder. So that's one way to get to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and this is actually where all the, all the projects are. So I'm gonna go back one. So you use these little arrows up here to navigate. And one cool thing, if you're gonna go somewhere a lot, so for example, let's, let's say I, I'm going to be using my desktop quite a bit. Um, let me go back here. Yeah, there's my desktop. You can right click on a folder and say add to favorites. And then boom, instead of having to dig into, you know, my local drives here and into my C drive, I can just go to desktop at any time. It's now one of my favorites. So that's a really cool feature of the, if you're going to use the media browser, definitely learn how to make favorites. Bottom line. Okay. So browser. Let's open this up. Go, yikes. Let's go back um, and let's go to the mountain bike one. And here's the video folder. If you open it up, one of the cool things is you get this really great thumbnail and you can hover scrub. So you can hover scrub right over the top of your clips. So that's pretty cool. You have all those ingest settings that I talked about earlier. If you just click on this little a wrench icon, you can go to the ingest settings and set your proxy workflow right here if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. So that's that's pretty cool. You can select a whole folder. Now, what, what I recommend you do um, is you right click on this and just choose import. And when I do that, that entire folder should have been imported into my project. And yes, indeed, there is the folder. If you're gonna import another folder, make sure you click off. You don't want the files to go inside that video folder. So let's just jump back to the media browser and we're gonna import each of these different folders. So you don't want the Premiere Pro folder though. So you do want in the interview, import, awesome. So I'm just gonna switch back and forth. Oh, make sure that that's not selected import my graphics. Now what's in that graphics folder? Nothing, so I really don't need to bring it in. Um, audio merge, definitely let's import that. And again, click off to deselect it. We want our audio, which is our music, import that, deselect. So you get the idea. And we're gonna use this proxy workflow later, so let's go ahead and import it now. All right, so all of our files are in here. Now, why do people use the media browser instead of the import? A, because they can see the clips and they can hover scrub through the clips in the media browser. Another reason that they do it is um, sometimes you use, uh, you, you wanna bring things in directly from your SD card. So let's, let's take a look at what that workflow would look like. So I'm gonna collapse my favorites. I'm gonna go to my local drives 
and collapse my C drive. So my E drive is my SD card. I just plugged in my SD card to my computer and in my SD card, there's a folder called private. Now, if you go to find, let's see. Yeah. Here is the exact same thing in the browser, in the file explorer, I guess. If you dig in here, yes, the video clips are going to be kind of in here somewhere. Well, where are they? Are they in the AVCHD, Sony? Um, I know they're in the AVCHD, and then there's BDMV, and then just, you see what I'm saying? You have to dig, 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 and it can be a little bit difficult, whereas the media browser is much easier. So I'm going to open up private, I'm going to go to AVCHD, and boom, there are my video clips. So I didn't have to dig two levels deeper to find my video clips. I was playing around with some rack focusing this morning and uh, working with some flowers out in my backyard. So you, you get the idea, right? The second thing, if you are shooting with a video camera and let's say you shoot a half an hour show, video cameras can't record half an hour long video clips. So what it does is it does what's called spanning. It'll take all three of these clips and break break up that 30 minutes into three 10 minute clips. So let's say, you know, that's the maximum file size is 10 minutes. So it's going to make three of those clips. So it'll automatically weld all three of those clips into a single clip. So it's called spanning. And that can be a really handy thing. Also, if your if your video camera records audio separately, and the video separately into two separate video files, the media browser will span those. In other words, it'll merge all of those together and give you just a single video clip that you can then right click. Now here's a key thing. When you're coming from an SD card, let's go to the settings here and you want to choose copy. Okay. So you want to copy it. And I like, well, the verification doesn't really matter. And then same as project, I of course love to choose location. I'm going to go in here and go to my desktop. So I know you guys don't have SD cards probably right now, but you may be using these in the future. So I'm going to make a copy, make sure it goes into my video folder. Hit select location will be, I'll hit okay. And now when I import it, it's going to make a copy and you can see there's the, the file in my Premiere Pro project and it's making a copy. There we go. Here's the danger with bringing media in directly from your SD card. Let me just kind of walk you through it. So I'm going to go to my SD card in the media browser. I'm going to open that up, open AVCHD and let's grab this middle one. I don't think I grabbed that one. So if you directly, if you just right click on it immediately and hit import and you don't do any of the you know, you have no ingest settings here. You just right click and import it. And you can see I just, I imported it into the root of my uh, folder. Here's what often happens. We then later, we take our SD card out, right? Cause you go to shoot your, you know, with your camera or maybe it's the next day and your SD card's not in your computer. So I'm just gonna pull it out of my oh. computer and uh oh, there's an error message and it's saying, hey, where is this media? It, it's no longer on the hard drive. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. And when you see this question mark, that's a bad sign. And if it was on your timeline, you'd get this media offline, the dreaded media offline dialog box, which is not a good thing. So how do you fix this? A, it's not the end of the world, provided you didn't delete the file on your camera. I'm going to plug my SD card back in. We're going to go ahead and just this time I'm going to dive in here and I know it's this one right here and I can tell because it says 0001.mts. So this time I'm going to copy it and I will throw it, I don't know, we'll go to my desktop and I don't actually want to keep this with the rest of the files that I send to people. So I'm just going to paste it right here for my example. Um, and now in Premiere Pro, it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is right click on it and choose or link media. You can also click on it. There it is. It's under file and link media. And then you get this dialog box and you just have to find it. You just have to locate 
and go to where it's at. So remember, I put it on the C drive, oh, desktop. There we go. And there it is. So if you link it back here in the project panel, it automatically links here on the timeline. So that's how you fix it if you break a link to one of your clips. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.